Hello my wonderful Misfitians and welcome back to another video. As most of you know, I have been working on my artistic haul of the holidays adventure and after completing the witch's hat, I decided I wanted to add a little lit jack-o'-lantern to my fox. So this is a little bit of a bonus tutorial for you. And as always, all of the materials and supplies that you would need are inside of Watercolor Misfit Land. The link is down below. So let's go ahead and start with the tutorial. So go ahead and start with uploading the jack-o'-lantern file that I provided for you and add it to your canvas inside of your Cricut Design Space. Once your canvas opens, resize that pumpkin to about two and a half inches wide to 11 inches tall. Then what I did is I copied that file and then pasted it two more times. Then I click the unlock button on my file and basically stretched these images with my mouse to both be smaller horizontally as well as larger. So this will create an assortment of wider and smaller pumpkins that you can play around with later. Once you're happy with the placement of your shapes, go ahead and click make it. You will then be prompted on how to load the material and the size of the material that you wish to use. Once you have selected these options, you will be prompted to add the material type, load it onto your mat, and then into the machine. Press go and allow the Cricut to cut the material so that we can get on to creating. Once you have your die cuts cut, I recommend placing them in a pile in front of you with the three larger sections in one pile and then the face sections in another. Personally, I recommend placing them in a pile in front of you based on color and also place the larger sections in one pile and then the faces in another. If you have problems removing your die cuts from your mat, I recommend slightly curling the mat and encouraging the materials to basically pop off on their own. Now, I have organized these die cuts to be in the order that we will basically be placing them or gluing them on top of one another. So the largest piece will be first and then the second and then the third and kind of on and on until you hit the bottom, which will be the top piece that we glue onto our jack-o'-lantern. So as you can see here, this is kind of an idea of what all the pieces would look like stacked on top of one another. Now, since I'm going to be working with glue, I highly recommend either taking a Ziploc bag and then cutting it open and laying it on your table. This basically will prevent the glue from sticking to your table as well as from your die cuts sticking to the glue. However, the last time when I filmed this, it was very shiny of a surface and I feel like it was kind of distracting. So I actually bought a silicone mat, which I'm gonna be using today. This basically does the exact same thing as the Ziploc bag. So if you're planning on basically doing more of these, you might want to invest in one, but the Ziploc bag works just as well. So the next thing that we're going to be doing is creating our stem. And if you are intimidated by drawing or even cutting out freehand, I have provided a pumpkin stem for you on the die cut to trace and then cut out for yourself. But as you can see here, I'm just going to freehand it. And if you want to do this as well, basically you just take a scrap of brown cardstock paper, cut a square, then cut a curved line through the center of the square as you're seeing me do here. Next, cut another curved line on the other side of the square. And this is basically going to make the sides of your stem. Personally, I like to try and make the base of my stem a little bit wider as well as the top part a little bit thinner, but do whatever you feel works best. 
finally cut the top of the stem to form basically a sharp tip. This project is going to feel a bit like a little puzzle that we're slowly putting together. The very first thing I recommend you do is begin by separating the two largest shapes on your table and then observing kind of how they fit together. Then with some tacky glue, attach your brown stem to the back center of your second largest shape. Then with your Tombow tape runner, sandwich the stem between those two shapes. And this will make the stem appear to be growing through the center of our pumpkin. Now you're going to notice all of these pumpkins kind of have a little butt to them. Um, anytime you are placing these shapes on top of one another, make sure that you're lining that little butt of the bottom. That's going to help you keep these shapes lined up correctly. So once you have those two shapes glued together, go ahead and take your last large orange piece and glue that right on top with your tape runner. And as you can see, the pumpkin is already starting to take on a 3D effect. Okay, now moving on to the next step. Go ahead and grab one of your large yellow shapes and then take one of your jack-o'-lantern face shapes and trace around this shape. Basically, we're gonna cut our larger shape to make it smaller. Once you have your trace done, go ahead and cut around that line. And this is going to be our pumpkin's innards. Next, with your pencils, go ahead and color a ball of light over this shape. First, we're gonna start with white dead in the center and basically make a circle. Then we're gonna go slightly lighter and do more of a lighter yellow. I used cream. Then we're gonna do a brighter yellow, which I use canary yellow from my color, but if you have just a lemon type of yellow, that most likely will work as well. And then finally, I added a light orange circle around the outside of my ball of light. So basically pretend like this is where the candle would be or your light source. And in the center, it's very, very bright. And as you slowly expand out, it kind of gets a little bit darker and a little bit darker. Once you have all of those colors down, go ahead and make sure to blend over them and kind of smooth out and merge these colors together so that there is a smooth transition between all of them. This is what's gonna create that soft glow effect inside of our jack-o'-lantern. And you probably know the drill now. Go ahead and take your tape runner and attach this shape to the center of your pumpkin, just as you see me doing here. Next, we're gonna be making our jack-o'-lantern's face. Now, I want you to notice that there are actually two faces for your die-cut pumpkin. You're going to notice that one face is slightly smaller than the other. This was designed on purpose, basically to help create an inner edge to our jack-o'-lantern's eyes, nose, and mouth. Make sure the larger shape is at the back and then the smaller face is towards the front as you can see me doing here. With your tape runner, attach the larger shape to your yellow glow.
Oh, and here's a little tip for you. If you notice some of the extra glue from your tape runner kind of getting stuck in those holes where your eyes and your nose and your mouth are for your pumpkin, you can take the Cricut Weeder tool and basically remove some of that excess glue before attaching it to your yellow glow. Once you have the first face attached, the second face is going to slightly move to either the right or the left. Depending on which side, you basically want that inner rind to basically show up. I moved mine slightly to the right, as you can see, and I have a little bit of overlap from my previous shape. And basically this is gonna be peeking out from just below. Once you have decided where you want your face to go, go ahead and touch it with your tape runner as I did here. And now we're getting to the fun part. We're gonna start adding color to our jack-o'-lantern. So we're gonna start with our first layer of shading. With your orange pencil, go ahead and add a slight shadow to the left corners of your eyes, nose, and mouth. Then blend this color with the yellow and finally the white. This is basically going to help add that glowing effect we started earlier. The color pencils that I used for these steps was sunburst yellow, canary yellow, as well as white. And finally, to make our rind pop a little bit more, I took my sunburst yellow, which is a orangey color, and just added color to the rind areas to make them show up on my pumpkin a bit better and also help with that shadow effect. Once again, with your tape runner, go ahead and attach your larger orange face over the yellow one that we just colored and try and line up the left sides of your shape as best as possible. You're gonna notice that there's a larger yellow section sticking out to the right. Honestly, I made a miscalculation on the size earlier, but I think this little mishap actually turned out all right at the end and added an extra layer. So don't worry about it and we're gonna be correcting that a little bit later. Finally, with your tape runner, attach the last piece of our pumpkin, that small half face piece that I have here. Try and line that up as best as possible with the previous shape of our eyes and mouth. Finally, with your tape runner, go ahead and attach this last piece so that we can move on to our final details. So the first thing that I'm going to do is take my orange pencils and go ahead and color over that yellow piece of paper or edge that is sticking out. And I'm basically going to blend it and make it look like it's part of our original pumpkin. Then with a darker orange pencil, I'm going to add shading around the bottom edges of my pumpkin as well as the edges of the cut paper pieces as you kind of see me doing here. So this is going to create a light line along the edge and just help those shapes to pop a little bit more. Once you have those shadowy lines laid out where you desire, go ahead and take a lighter orange pencil and blend those out a little bit so they're not as drastic. Then I recommend adding just some little curves here and there to kind of add texture or basically, you know how pumpkins have those kind of lumpy lines. That's kind of the effect that I'm trying to do. 
So go ahead with your darker pencil, add some of those and then blend them out once again with your lighter pencil. Now to make our stem kind of stick out a little bit more, I used a darker orange and for my case the name of the pencil was cadmium orange but just used some darker orange color and I basically colored in that back layer of paper behind the stem. This is going to create basically a shadow effect and show depth and separate that back section from the front which is going to help add to our 3D effect with our die cut. Now that we have that done, let's go ahead and move on to adding shadows to our rinds. So with a medium orange pencil, I use sunburst yellow. Go ahead and color all the rind areas or basically the paper areas that are sticking out underneath our top layer of orange on the side of our eyes, nose, and mouth. This is going to help those pop a little bit more. Then once again add a little bit of white to your eyes to kind of help that glow pop through once again. And the last thing that I'm going to do is basically color in my stem to make it look like this all works uniformly together. So for me, I took a light brown, medium brown, and dark brown, and basically shaded my stem, starting from highlights on the right side, and then slowly moving to shadows on the left. The colors that I used were sienna brown, sunburst yellow, mineral orange, as well as sepia. Finally, with my sepia pencil, I added some small lines onto my stem to basically represent fine texture along that stem. And finally to the fun part, let's add some bling. So I'm going to be using some of my Aqua Bronze Pale Gold with a size 4 brush. However, you do not have to use this. Um, you can just pick up some gold craft paint from the store and use that for this step as well. So the very first thing that I'm going to do with my gold paint is paint the inner rinds of my pumpkin. This is really going to create that glimmer effect on the inside of my pumpkin and really make these rinds stand out. Next, I'm gonna take my brush and basically dry brush slightly the sides or the edges of my paper that is sticking out. So what this is going to do is create a light line shimmer along the edges of my paper. This is honestly a very small step, but I really think it helps add that just extra oomph of sparkle to our jack-o'-lantern. And finally, the last thing I did was just take a small brush and add strokes of gold basically wherever I desired. So I added some to the stem as well as basically some to the little curves of my pumpkin. Basically add as much or as little as you want to kind of glam up your pumpkin. And finally with some white ink, 
I use Copic White, but you can use PH Martin's White, as well as just white craft paint. I took a small detail brush and added tiny dots inside the eyes as well as the mouth to kind of help that glowing inside glow effect that we're going for. Basically these little dots help add a feeling of sparkle inside of our pumpkin. And I also added little dots on the outside in different areas on my pumpkin to kind of give the effect of sparkle there. Now, if you are adding basically little white dots, especially if you're working with Copic I'm, or PH Martin's um, White Ink does this too, um, but if you're working with this particular supply and you place dots somewhere, which I did, and after I got done, I was like, I don't really like this placement. Um, you can take with your finger and actually just wet it slightly, not super wet. I just basically tap the water of my um, water cup and basically lightly um, got my finger wet and then while this paint is still wet just kind of go over it and rub that white off. You can actually erase this white while it's wet. So it's really nice and forgivable if you are playing around with this white and kind of just tweaking stuff and figure out where you want these little dots to go. If you don't like something, just know that this is very forgivable if it is wet. If it's dry, it's a little bit less so. Um, you might also pick up some of that gold that we've already laid down, so you might need to touch that up a little bit more. But this particular supply is very nice to have if you're not quite sure where you want things to go. So once again, feel free to play around until you get your jack-o'-lantern looking the way you want. I did an orange jack-o'-lantern, but you could play around with different ones. You could try a white one, a cream one. I was even thinking about maybe a, like those Cinderella kind of pumpkins, I think they call them. That kind of paley teal, it's more of a gourd, um, would be cool to play around with as well. So feel free to take this and kind of tweak it to your preferences. And that is kind of the idea of how to create your own little jack-o'-lantern. So I'm going to be putting this on my little fox painting with his little witch's hat. And when Thanksgiving comes around, I'm going to tweak these again and just create little pumpkins without the faces. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Happy painting y'all and I will see you next time.